Houston has some of the most beautifully decorated homes in America. In this special edition of Homeworthy, we're highlighting some of the city's top tastemakers and discovering what they did to set their homes apart. From the unique art that adorns their walls to the antiques and pieces that seamlessly blend nostalgia with modern elegance, these Houston creatives are setting new standards in the state of Texas. Enjoy! Hi, I'm Allison Kenworthy, the founder of Homeworthy, and we're now offering a membership plan that gives our supporters early and exclusive access to new videos. Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Roz. You're here at my home in Los Angeles. Come on in, I can't wait to show you around. With this membership, we invite you to open more doors, discovering new homes, rooms, and personalities available only to those with the keys to our guest house. You'll be part of a community of people who are just as passionate as you are about interior design. To access all of this exclusive content, simply click the Join button below to become a member today. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Hi, Homeworthy. Welcome to Texas. I'm Tina. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Like and subscribe for more. Hi, my name is Tina Pine, and we're in Houston, Texas, where the bigger the hair, the closer to God. I need to work on mine a little bit, don't you think? Ah, uh, Houston is a big city. Um, I've been here since 1986, and it has grown. It's unbelievable how it's grown, and it's a great city to live in. I love it. Um, I met my husband here, I had my child here, we raised her here. It's just a wonderful place to live. You may have seen me on Homeworthy before with our Maine home. We live in Maine in the summer. It's a lot cooler. That's the only bad thing about Houston is it's pretty darn hot here for about three to four months. So I married a Yankee. His, his family has been there in Maine over a hundred years. So we are pretty much stuck in Maine in the summers. I, I wouldn't use the word stuck. It's, it's a great place to be. We live on the water. I grew up in a small town in Louisiana called New Iberia, Louisiana. It's where they make Tabasco sauce from a family of eight children. Um, you can't even imagine how it is to grow up with so many people in, in a household. At Christmas, there's 90 something people around Christmas. I grew up in a huge family. My husband grew up in a smaller family with only four kids. And they lived in different places. They lived in uh, Harbor Island. They lived in Maine, of course. And he grew up in Far Hills, New Jersey. So I married a Yankee. It's like we're from two different worlds and we have a child who's a little of both of us. Um, it's, it's just, it's been a, a very fun thing to incorporate him into things and him teach me things. It, it truly is like we're from two different countries, but it's a, it's a lot of fun. This apartment is in an area of Houston called River Oaks, and it's been here a long time. The building is built very, very well. Um, it is 7,260 square feet, I think, give or take a few inches there. Uh, we bought it as raw space and completely finished it. We lived in a house on Del Monte, which is another street not far from here. And the house was totally traditional. And I wanted to make it a little more modern with modern art. So I call it transitional. It's the 
antique pieces mixed with more modern furniture to make it a little more lively, lighter colors. It's just, and with a lot of art because we're art collectors and we love that. This is the entry, and what I love about this apartment is the elevator doors open into it. Of course, you have a fob that can only go to your room, so it's private. It's not like anybody can just walk in, but I love that, and I love this very favorite piece of art by Anthony James, which is... If you saw the movie, The Glass Onion, he did a huge one for Ed Norton and that's his real piece. And it's just, you have to look at it like this. And when my daughter has friends over, this whole thing is covered with fingerprints and nose prints. There's a lot more important pieces of art in this apartment, but this is the one everybody loves. Then I'll have you look at this piece of my daughter. It's a portrait by a young artist named Seth Haverkamp. I think this kid is fantastic. He's won the, I'm gonna say this wrong, the National Portrait Association or American Portrait Association like three times. And he, he really captured her. And of course, I like a little whimsical pieces like some cherries on the table. This is Sarah Martin McRae. She's a Maine artist. Well, I bought her piece in Maine. Uh, I'm not, she lives there now, at least in the summers. And it's Washington crossing the Delaware. And if you look closely, there's a horse climbing over and that's a self-portrait of her with her dog, which I think is really fun and cool. Let's go to the living room. You walk into the living room and of course, those of you that saw the main show saw that I love Brian White's work. And Brian White did this dress in the corner, which I'm gonna show you now. It's made of seashells. He did it from a Dior dress that I showed him a picture of. And it's all made of abalone shells. And I mean, is that cool? And of course, this is Donald Sultan, who we love. And over here is our newest acquisition. It's a, a Winslow Homer small piece called The Shepherdess, and I really love it. It's just, bought that in Maine. It's interesting, um, a dealers will call me and, and show me a piece that they have, and I mean, look at the variety of art. This is just so different. Um, it, it's not any one thing, it's what I love. And I, I, love to, I love to find it. I mean, the hunt's half of the fun. Brian White, had a, I gave him a challenge. I asked him to make me these little pieces and they're made of copper and he did flowers on them. I saw something like some little pieces and they were outrageously expensive. So I thought, well, I could get Brian to make that for me and he did. I just love those little pieces. Noel made this furniture and this coffee table's really big. This is a piece by Dale Dunning that we got in Canada. I mean, I get them all over the place. There's a great shop in Houston. Um, uh, let's see, I'm suffering from this disease called CRS. Can't remember, can't remember the name of it. I'll think of it in a minute. But anyway, it's just really fun. This piece actually belongs to my daughter. Um, her godfather, Joe's brother, gave that to her, he passed away this year. And, and she said, mom, that is really not very pretty. I love it, but not so much for a 23 year old, but I'm hanging on to it for her. These interesting pieces came from Moxie. I just think they're so fun the way that they did them. It's a little shop in Houston. And that's a Richard Erdman piece. And let me tell you about the art dealer we got this from. Her name's Melissa Morgan. She also represents Anthony James. She's in Palm Desert, California, and that is one of the best art galleries you've ever been to. If you're in that area, you should go by and have a look. She has great stuff, and she's always finding things for me. The colors in this home are neutral because the art is the color. I, I didn't want to compete with a lot of different things, although I did a kinky wallpaper in the bathroom um, that's kind of dark. Uh, but I think that a home needs to feel serene. A lot of people love loud colors and I think it's great, but I, I have to live here and I wanna feel calm when I come home. And that's why I, I always like to use neutral colors and have the art as, as the color in the home.
we bought a unit in this building because we think it's a great building. Our, we lived in a house on Del Monte and our daughter was getting ready to graduate from high school and we bought a smaller unit. Um, it needed to be redone and my husband kept saying it might be a tad too small. It just might be. So I had a friend who wanted to look for another unit. So the two of us began to look and when the elevator doors opened here, it was completely raw space on the 12th floor, which is like 180 foot elevation, give or take. And I saw the views and I just thought, oh my God, I can make this place really fabulous with the elevator doors opening into the apartment. I, I just want to do this. It was on the market for probably four years. And interesting enough, it was owned by a Saudi prince who actually lived here and then didn't live here for 10 years. Um, he had a leak, he didn't fix it. They made him take it down to the stud. So it was totally raw space. He had it priced pretty high. So my husband was reading the paper and not paying attention. And I do all of our real estate buys. I buy our cars. I, he doesn't mess with any of that. I do all of it because I love it. And he's sitting there reading the paper and I said, Hey, I saw this raw space and, and I thought I'd make an offer on it. And he's reading the paper and he's not paying attention to me, but he didn't say no. So I went back and I made this really low ball offer on it. And I didn't hear back for a week. So Monday morning, we're beginning to tear down the other apartment and start on it. And Friday afternoon, the realtor calls. She says, hey, the Saudi prince says he needs $200,000 more. I said, tell him to stick it up his royal ass. And she goes, oh my God, could I say that nicer? I said, of course you can. So she came back 15 minutes later. He said, he took the offer. I said, oh my God, now I have to go get the money from Joe. So I went home and I said, Joe, you know that unit I told you about? He said, no, what? I said, the one at the raw space. He said, yeah, I said, I bought it. He said, what? I said, I bought it. He said, for what? I told him the price. He said, can I see it? There's no way you did that. I said, yes, I did. So that's how this journey began. Let's go to the dining room. This table has been in my husband's family, I think since 1760. And he, you know, it's important to him that it stays in the family and that he keeps it. Uh, I think it's going to go to his son when we sell the house. This chandelier is a Richelieu. It's a French chandelier that I bought at a shop in New Orleans many, many years ago. And then I have Yoga Girl. She came from Moxie here in Houston. I just think she's kind of kinky and fun. Another Sultan here, another Sultan here. These two pieces are uh, Ken Nolan's, which uh, we got in Maine. Ken Nolan lived in Maine and painted in Maine like a lot of great artists. And I was able to get these from a dealer there. And I just love them. It's, it's just very different than this dining table, but I think it all kind of blends well together. Let's go to the kitchen, one of my favorite rooms. Welcome to a kitchen with a house attached. I love this kitchen. I had so much fun doing this room. It was uh, just so much fun. These kitchen counters are like, and I'm not gonna say like five centimeters. I looked for two years trying to find the marble that would fit like this. And we finally took us two years to find it. You know, these, these wine holders that I use for my everyday, well, I only have one set of, one set of uh, flatware. I use them to store it because it's so easy when you have people lined up here, they come and get their stuff. And it's just, it's just makes it easier for me. Plus you've got fancy schmancy stuff. You need to use it. And of course, I have all of my kitchen goodies on silver trays because I have the trays and I want to use them. And I, I try to use everything I can. And that's my collection of copper pots, which I do use. I use that and I also like to use black iron skillets because I am from Louisiana, let's not forget. When I spend the summer in Maine, 
I like to grow my own herbs. So I take them here because we live in a high rise and dry them out. Mm, God, that smells good. And I dry them out and I put them in all these containers. So I have everything that I have in Maine here on a smaller scale, of course. And of course, got to have some honey and some peppers and all this fun stuff. Parsley. That's garlic. Mm, these are shallots, dried shallots. We have um, our salt in here. This is like this uh, smoked salt. Oh my God, I love that stuff. Some pepper, oh, lovely pepper. And I even have some extra chives in a bag back here. Let's smell that. Smoked, yummy, 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 yummy. See what else we got here. <gasps> have to have my Tony Sacheries, my Cajun seasoning. And, oh yeah, and you know what this is for? This is for bacon grease, honey. We always gotta have bacon grease in a Cajun kitchen. Put it on almost everything. And then over here, I have these cool bottles that I collect and I put vinegars, and this one has a champagne vinegar in it, and all of my little concoctions. Um, I do my own balsamic, I do, you know, and then of course I have oils, and this isn't a big collection, but I have some of them here. And of course, I've gotta have my gallon of Tabasco sauce, because that's New Iberia, the berry, as we call it. I put them on silver trays because when Joe and I got married, we both had silver and I want to use my stuff. I don't want to keep it in a closet. So I just put them on silver trays because it's just pretty. First thing I got when we decided to do this apartment was I bought these doors. I knew I'd use them somewhere. I thought, oh, bedroom entrance. No, it's a pantry entrance. And there's my pantry. It's great. It's got a silver closet in it. It's got storage galore. It's just way fun. Let me show you this little piece of art that I love. Oh, don't forget the copper pots. I love them. I love them. I love them. These are my babies. And I have been collecting them for years. Lucky for me, when Joe and I got married, his mother had a collection of them. So we combine them and I cook in them all the time. That's why they don't look all pretty and shiny. They actually are used. I have sauce ones here and we'll have this one that I got in, in Paris in this little shop that I love the shape of. I want to find another one like that. And this one I do souffles in. Well, not souffles so much like frittatas and things like that. And this is, uh, it's supposed to be a fish pot, but I, I use it for all kinds of things. I do omelets. I do all kinds of things in it and I really use them. And here's my little cute aprons. Oh wait, I even have a mink apron for when I have fancy dinners. Mm-hmm got some little lips on it. And this is a Deborah Butterfield. I think she's so cool. This is actually made of bronze. It can go indoors or outdoors. I love horses. I grew up with horses and I just love that piece. Okay, this may look a little nasty to you, but it's not. This is vinegar that I make, red wine vinegar. You start off with a mother, you know, like you, you can buy some in the grocery store, doesn't matter what flavor or whatever, put it in there. And then when you don't finish a bottle of wine on that rare occasion, you just pour the rest of it in there. Our bottle's gone to vinegar. You just pour it in, white wine, it doesn't matter, champagne, whatever. And over time, it makes the best red wine vinegar. I also, each year, because I give it away for Christmas, I flavor it differently. One year is rosemary, and the next year is like maybe a cranberry. But if you're gonna use that, you wanna use a concentrate because if you just put raspberries in there, they'll get mold on them. And I ruined a whole one by doing that. So you want to use a concentrate to add a flavor to it. It makes a great Christmas gift. A home has to show you. You walk in and it, it tells a story about your life. It tells a story about how you feel and what makes you comfortable. I, I don't like to do the normal decorator things of the two couches, and sometimes I like to put four chairs, which you'll see in another room that we did here, that swivel, that it, people can actually sit and talk. It has, to, it has to feel you. We've had 
parties here where people are all over the place, and we've had political functions here and different things for different charities. Uh, these doors behind me all close, so you can enclose the rooms or have all three rooms open to each other. I love an open house. I don't like choppy little rooms. Let's look at the family room. This is a room where we spend an awful lot of time. I got my alligator head up here because I got to have my Louisiana connection. These are swivel chairs. Instead of doing the normal two couches facing each other, I thought this was a lot more intimate and a lot more fun. And Joe hates for a television to show, so we got a little hidden, except that way, sorry, went the wrong way. A TV hidden here that just twirls around. So you can watch television if you want to, but why watch television when you have a view like this? It's just lovely. It's lovely. And we sit here and it's really, when you have just four people, it's the best place to sit. The chairs are super comfortable. You can talk, you can swirl and talk to people and it's just, it's just great. Joe spends a lot of time in here. He does his paperwork in this room and you could sit here and just look at this view. Oh, it's just heaven. So let's go to Cammie's room, but let's stop at the bar first. Again, I wanted to use these trays, so that's what I did with them. And this, the same guy that did the other head did this piece, and it's, it's made of teletypes. Isn't that cool? Love that. I'm gonna show you a cool piece of furniture now. Joe's grandmother, uh, Petty Point Needlepoint, this piece in 1934, there's the date and her initials, but it's a card table. Isn't that just, it's so interesting to have something like this. We don't have anything like this from my family. Let's go to see Cammie's room. Cammie's a 23 year old law student at Tulane. So this is a coffee bar, but when she lived here, it was a bar. I mean, she had this thing set up. I thought it was kind of cool that she thought of that. Her room was the most fun to do. I love this painting. It is just Hunt Sloan. I just think it's so fun and shiny and it just adds all of the color. But I enjoyed doing this room. It was so much fun. It just so simple, but look at the wallpaper in her bathroom. This is Cammie's bathroom. I love it. I love doing it. I did a waterfall thing here. It's Schumacher from like the 60s. Isn't it great? It comes in like a gold too. I, I kind of wish I'd have gotten the gold, but I will be working on that in another house. I love it. When I decided to do this room, I, she needed storage. So these things pull out and they're great storage. And you'd be surprised how many kids have slept here. It's amazing. It's just wide enough and they, you know, crash. We can hear them having a blast in here. She has her own separate entrance to the back. They see these knobs that have peas on them. They all came from the Plaza Hotel. I was at an architectural place in New York and he had a box full of knobs that came from the Plaza Hotel like these two, these doorknobs. Aren't they cool? I just love them. So let's look at the bedroom. I'd like to show you something a little special. We have a little secret room and that's where my husband's stuff is, kind of man stuff, fishing gear, hunting gear, etc., etc. Isn't that cool? I love that. Okay, let's see what else. There's nothing really, this is just some antique pieces that we had in this mirror that I've had for probably 30 years. It's gone from house to house to house. It's just such a great piece. This is an interesting piece of art. It's made by a Korean artist whose name I will not massacre, but it is made of little pieces of paper and plastic. I just think it's such an interesting piece. Got that at Garisco Gallery as well in DC. 
I love these lamps. They're fun. This is a piece I've had for many, many years that was gold and we just put a different top on it so we could use it in this house. I feel like the view is absolutely part of the house. And I mean, nobody understands how green Houston is. They come to Texas and they think we've got tumbleweeds, but it's very green as you look out of the window and see. And at night, it's spectacular to look out. So that's why I don't like too much fussy, fussy furniture, or fussy things. I mean, I love art. The furniture is just a you know, something that's added to have a place to sit and to sleep. Oh, I do love that lamp, that chandelier. It's an old Baccarat piece, believe it or not, from the 50s or 60s. Welcome to my closet, darling. I want to show you this fun thing. This is a mirror that you can see if the back of your hair is, oh, 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 is done and mine's not. Should have looked at it sooner, but you know, it's behind me. What can I say? And it has a light that shows, oh yeah, now I got it. It goes from daytime to nighttime. It's just such a cool toy. There's some things about this closet. It's kind of a Pinterest closet that I have these shoe racks that do this. And I grew up with a big family, as you know, and we always had a Lazy Susan on our table. So what about a Lazy Susan for your shoes that you can flip around and your bags, actually for my bags, but you can put shoes in there if you want to, that you can move the shelves around. I mean, I think that is such a fun thing. I think other things that are important in a closet are these little sticks. I hang stuff on them all the time. You're packing, you're getting ready to go. It's just a great asset. Have as many as you can possibly fit in a closet. You never have enough of them. I love that. But anyway, look at this side. And I didn't do anything. This is what it looks like. It's a little messy, but that's okay. This is how I live. And the racks that, of course, pull down. I do have a little mood board for colors because you're always trying to put things together and you don't think about it. So I cut these things out. Oh, oh, and these are all my funny stickers. You know, like uh, not the brightest crayon in the box, are we? I have, I stick them here. Unattended children will be given an espresso and a kitten. I was put on this planet to shop for new shoes and consume massive amounts of chocolate products. Here's another one. It's been lovely, but I have to scream now. I just love to read them. I can please only one person per day and it's not your day. Tomorrow's like not looking good either. I have all kinds of fun things like that that I use to do my color combinations. Cause you forget, you know, if you're wearing a particular color like sage that you can actually wear candy apple or fuchsia or Kelly green with it, that you can, you know, get the butter with apricot and just mixing your colors up, which I don't do enough of. I, I kind of have a tendency to be very neutral, but um, I'm learning by looking at the boards and I have these cute little wooden things that I put hats on. This is my New York Yacht Club hat. Just have fun with it. It's not too, I'm not too serious about anything. I am a multitasker. I can listen, ignore and forget all at the same time. This is what my friends give me for gifts. I love it. This is the bathroom. Oh, serenity. I love it. And I love to lay in the tub and read this. Can you try to read it? Ooh, la, 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 la whatever it says. It's really fun. I got that in an auction. I just thought it was so fun. Don't even know who the artist is. And this tub, oh my God, I love this tub. I can lay down all the way in it and just soak. I did these kind of cool shelves with thick glass. I just thought we were in Paris at the Ritz, I think, and they had this thick glass in the bathroom and I just thought it looked so beautiful that I wanted to do something like it that they slide in. Love the wallpaper. It's just soothing. And then this is the view. I mean, look at this. How could you not be grateful for something like this that you can see. Again, the silver trays everywhere. My mother-in-law 
gave me this. Her mother-in-law gave it to her when she got married. And it was black and tarnished and broken. I had it restored and it's my mirror to brush my teeth to in the morning and I get to see it all the time. Love it. It's something else I bought at auction. I just thought was attractive and I like the shape and form of it. So I got it and it looks cool in here, I think. I can look through it and see the skyline. I'm so fortunate and I, and I thank my lucky stars every day. I mean, we're alive another day. I thank God for it. Home is where my family is. I don't care if it's here or if it's in Maine or if it's in California, it's where my family is. That's home to me. Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Angela and welcome to my home in Texas. Come on in, I'm excited to show you around. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Be sure to visit our website, homeworthy.com, to discover amazing furniture, art, accessories, and more, all handpicked by our editors to help transform your house into a home. All of the items are inspired by the episodes you see here on Homeworthy. Enjoy! My name is Angela Geyer, and we are currently in my home in Houston, Texas. So we've lived in this home for around four and a half years. And funny story, um, I did not see the house before we moved in. It was completely up to my husband to house hunt and find this home. Um, we were actually living in Mississippi at the time. He started working in Houston. I had just had a baby and was not ready to house hunt. So I entrusted him to find us a home just close to his work. And that's how we ended up here. And I joke that the next house is all my decision. So welcome to our entry, well, faux entry. Our home lacks a formal entry. Um, so I decided to create one myself by filling it with the things that I think represent our family and our style the most, which is a lot of chintz. Um, my favorite Lijofa chintz, Althea, um, which I had made in a table skirt, um, and some Brunswick Ify, fun little fringe, because everything is more fun with fringe. Um, just mixing old and new is one of my favorite things to do. So adding coffee table books with some antique rose medallions and this new piece from Alexis Walters, which I still have to get framed, but she's one of my favorite artists. And these are my favorite colors. So just love that it represents us. And it's the first thing you see when, or first thing guests see when they walk into our home. So welcome to our formal living room. This is a space that I have enjoyed decorating the most because as much as I hate to admit it, it is a place that is kind of a kid-free zone. Like they're allowed in here, but please don't bring the goldfish and please don't bring the trucks. Um, but I've combined all of my favorite things into one space, like a little chintz, a little chinoiserie, a little drama, um, a little animal print, which is you know, a little bit more fun than what I would do in more of a family-friendly zone. So as I said, we lack a formal entry, but this is also one of the first things that guests see when they walk in. So I found this beautiful mirror in an antique store here in Houston, um, beautiful blue and white, which I am obsessed with, and my favorite color lamp. And then I've combined all of my favorite things in this one place. I found this um, Henredon coffee table on Cherish, which I love shopping. You just find so many beautiful antiques there. And actually the first thing I purchased for this home was this beautiful Gracie panel wallpaper panel that I had mounted and framed. And what I love about mounting and framing a wallpaper panel is that you can bring it with you wherever you go next. And that was my thought in mind because I love the idea of, you know, beautiful chinoiserie hand painted wallpaper, but we knew you weren't gonna be here forever. So I just love the idea of taking that with us wherever we go. Um, another one of my favorite, favorite things to do is mixing patterns. 
and I've combined, again, one of my favorite chintzes, Lee Jofa Althea, with some beautiful other patterns. And what makes it so unique is that you can find a fabric you love and that you've seen everywhere, but then combined with different prints and patterns mixed together, it's just so fresh and so unique. And that's one of my favorite things to do with patterns. Um, I absolutely love this Coromandel screen. I was faced with the tough decision of what to do with this blank and boring wall behind um, this sofa. And I found this at an antique store and fell in love with it and knew I needed to have it for our home. And it adds such a dramatic feel in here and I truly, truly love that. Another one of my favorite pieces that I found is this gorgeous chinoiserie planter. Um, I was actually forbidden from buying a real plant um, ever again, but I purchased this because we're having company over and I just love it. I mean, I can't keep them alive, but it's just so beautiful. You need something live and real in your home at all times, in my opinion. Um, something that is truly speaks to me, but is more so my mother, and I guess that I got it from her, is this tiger print. This was an old bench that I found and we had reupholstered and it's just fun and dramatic. And I, I just love the pattern play in here. It's just so great. Um, another one of my favorite things to do is to buy lamps and then have them zhuzhed up with some fun pleated lampshades. And this um, pleat was actually the fabric in our primary bedroom that we reused to have made for this fun little lampshade. And this has just become a really cozy space for us. And one of the newest additions to this space, which is one of my favorite pieces of all time, is this commode, but she's a commode with a secret. She turns into a secretary's desk. Um, so I just thought that was so fun. And this is where I store all of my placemats and all of my tablecloths that I love to use for our dining room tables. So I just thought that was really fun. So next we'll move into the dining room. This home was built in the late 80s and 90s. Um, so it has a lot of those details and lacks a lot of the character and charm that I love from the 20s and you know the beautiful arches and the moldings. So because we know we're not staying here for a long period of time, instead of redoing the whole house, we've just tried to fill it with things that bring us a lot of joy and beautiful furniture and wallpaper and things that were less permanent. And we've truly loved the way it's turned out so far. So welcome to our dining room. I love this space because we've truly transformed it with this beautiful wallpaper. Um, most of the things in here, to be honest, are either antique or vintage vines. This table was an antique and these chairs were actually antique vines that we had painted and reupholstered in a beautiful cravat fabric. Um, the wallpaper is truly unique and special and truly makes our home so special and unique because this color was actually customized based on a paint sample that I sent to Waterhouse Wall Hangings. I fell in love with this beautiful fabric on our chairs, wanted it to match because I'm sort of a matchmalist, and they were able to customize this based on the fabric, and I love it so much, and definitely want to recreate this wherever we go next. But I have to say that my favorite, favorite, favorite piece in the whole entire house, and this room of course, is this antique set that my mother, my father gave my mother for an anniversary. And I had loved it so much in my mother's home and I kept repeating it every time I'd go home. And eventually she was like, Angela, you can have it. So I remember at Christmas dinner one year, she said that and I ran upstairs, got my suitcase, went downstairs with my suitcase, packed it up so fast in case she changed her mind. And I mean, that was kind of a faux pas at Christmas dinner, but I just, I loved it so much. And I truly believe she gave it to me because she was sick of polishing it, but her loss is my gain. And it is truly a reminder of my mom and, and my dad and the antiques that she loves and the character and charm that they bring to their home that I want in my own home. Um, and it reminds me of her. So I just love that. Um, also a beautiful antique find, same with the mirror. And this is a new visual comfort chandelier. Um, and I have to say, setting tables is one of my favorite, favorite things to do. I truly love it. Just, you know, whether it's for Sunday brunch, Sunday dinner, or just hosting people at home. And I do love creating floral, floral arrangements. 
Um, but the floral shop here in Houston, the floral studio here in Houston, created these beautiful florals for me um, because we're actually hosting a dinner for a friend's birthday tonight and they did such an amazing job. But I love this room. If I could describe my dream dining room, this would be it. It is a truly a blue and white chinoiserie dream and I think I fit in quite well here. This is China I actually found at an antique store somewhere in Texas. I don't remember where I was. I love it so much. I paired it with our monogrammed napkins that I use quite often and just some beautiful, beautiful um, placemats that I love to collect. I am obsessed with all things tableware, placemats and tablescapes and um, tablecloths. They just bring me so much joy to set a table that's so unique because you can really speak to your personality when you set a table. And, and then you, you entertain other people here and it just shows your personality. So I just love that. I've decorated my house and I'd like to say a more traditional style. I love mixing new pieces with antiques and reupholstering old pieces to give them new life. I love color, so I definitely think it's more traditional than any other style, but with a twist. I do love to incorporate some new pieces with old pieces to, you know, show my personality a little. I do fancy myself a little chintz, actually a lot of chintz. I'm so grateful that I have a husband that fully embraces it, but chintz is one of my favorite. I am a sucker for a good floral. I love pattern mixing. I love mixing colors together to create something that's different and fun. Let's move into the family room. So this is our family room and this is where we spend majority of our time because even though we have a playroom, my children insist on being close to me at all times. But when designing this room, I knew I needed to be family friendly, so I chose a lot of performance fabrics. So everything from the sofa to the carpet to the chair was chosen with family in mind. So this is a fun chair. It was an old chair that I found that I had reupholstered in a Kravit performance fabric, but of course, everything is better with fringe. So I had the Samuel and Sons fringe made and it says, you know, I'm kind of a fun mom. Um, these chairs I love, and these colors usually are not what I would gravitate toward, but I found this fabric, Meredith Ellis used this fabric in a Kipps Bay show house in Dallas a few years ago, and I absolutely fell in love with it. It's a Lisa Fine fabric, and I knew I needed to have it, so I had these old benches reupholstered and some coordinating pillows made with it. Um, not to say that this is the most family-friendly coffee table, but I love it and my kids are old enough to not, you know, bump their heads and all of that stuff. Um, I know I've said that this house was built in the 80s or 90s, so it has some quirks to it that we weren't re very keen on, you know, redoing because we're not staying here for long. And one of those quirks is the fact that this cabinet here used to store the TV because they were just smaller, you know, back in the 80s and 90s. And not knowing what to do with it and not wanting to replace, I made it my little secret bar, um, which I think is fun. It's my little tequila bar because I do love myself some tequila. Um, so just a little spot and of course everyone needs a bar in their family room. I mean, who doesn't? Um, but yes, I just love this space and how it's turned out. Another one of my favorite little things is to, you know, add some fun lampshades to just regular lamps. And yes, filling my bookshelves with things that are old and new. I love bookshelf styling. I think it's always so fun to see how people style their bookshelves. It really speaks to their personality. Um, I love myself some chinoiserie and rose medallions and coffee table books. I'd say my tips for bookshelf styling is to always mix new and old. Always use coffee table books, but mix them vertically, horizontally. Then fill it in with things that you love the most. And for me, that's a lot of blue and white and chinoiserie and plates and decorative things. Um, family, family pictures, things that speak to you, especially when you're in a family room and you want it to you know, reflect your style and reflect your personality and yourself as a family. Things like family pictures or things that you've collected along when you travel, things that are important to you, there's always a spot for them on your bookshelves. So when you're designing a space for your family, you also have to consider the fact that not only your family will be here, but multiple people will be here and at once. And if you don't want to sit next to each other 
all the time, then having multiple different sections of seating is one of my favorite things to do. I don't particularly love sectional sofas, so creating little sections of seating um, was the ideal choice for us. We started with a sofa that fit the space well. We have two additional seating um, pieces right here, and then a comfy space that if someone wants to read, they can come here too, along with benches for additional seating if anyone needed it or just to put their foot up. But there's plenty of seating options for everyone here for what they're doing and all the things that we do in here, which is crafts and all the fun stuff when you have children. One of my favorite things to do is to light candles um, when I'm home. I just love filling my house with scents that just bring me a lot of happiness. And my favorite for this time of year is Thyme's Simmered Cider. And it is so good. It smells like fall, but it's also so good all year round. So I have two young children, ages four and six, and while I was decorating this home, of course I had to consider their ages in mind. So a lot of the things that we've chosen for our home are family friendly, performance fabrics, things like that, or darker colors that will hide the stains, and performance friendly um, sofas and rugs and things like that. Um, but I do have to say that I was grateful that this home did come with a formal living room because as much as I love my children, this is the one room we are not allowed to roll Tonka trucks up and down and color and paint. And so I do have my little space despite everything else being very family friendly. I have made this space uniquely mine by truly taking my time and finding things that I love. I made the mistake in my old home of just buying things to buy it to get it furnished and I ended up with a home I did not like and things I didn't like. So I learned my lesson the hard way. And with this house, I've truly taken my time to find things that I truly love, want to be in this house or my next house forever by finding classic pieces and reupholstering them in fabric that I love and that bring me joy that I can see myself loving 20 years down the road. So here we are in our kitchen, our little breakfast nook, and one of my favorite things about this home is how it opens up, the kitchen opens up to our family space because it truly allows that semi-open concept that I love while still having everything a little bit separate, which I love in the more traditional sense. Uh, this is where we have all of our meals as a family with our children. Um, one of my favorite things to do is on Sundays, we set a fun little brunch table. So. This is just a little representation. I love a beautiful um, tablecloth with beautiful florals, and these are from the floral studio. And we haven't renovated our kitchen because we knew we were gonna stay here for a long time. So I've just kind of filled everything with blue and white plates in hopes that it disguises things. But the funny story about this plate wall is that I actually created this to hide one quirky feature of our home, which is a light switch. Um, right there and that's how it all started and I've just kind of built it and built it and it keeps on going and I just love that but the chairs were upholstered in a performance fabric and we just love spending our time in here it's just so bright and just so cozy I am sadly the chef in our household I'm not very good <laughs> nor do I enjoy cooking um, and our kitchen makes it difficult to cook in to be honest um, but I'd like to think that one day I will perfect my cooking skills. Today is not that day, but maybe in a few years. So when I went to college and was forced to decide on a major, I truly had no idea what I wanted to do. I had always loved interior design, and in fact, one of my favorite parts about college was decorating my dorm room. Um, but I settled on a communications degree, and then after college, I still didn't know what I wanted to do. And in a true Elwood's moment, I said, why not law school? Or my parents actually said, why not law school? So I went to law school, graduated with law at um, a school in Chicago, and passed the bar in Mississippi. And I decided to stay home with my son at the time, not knowing anyone there. And so once we moved to Houston and COVID happened, I started decorating my own home and found it so much fun and knew that my passion was interior design. And that's kind of how I ended up where I am. So this is our little bar area. It's off the kitchen and off the dining room, but conveniently located by the laundry room because we all need a drink when we're doing laundry. Um, one of my favorite things to collect is colored glassware, just making it fun for guests, 
but it's also fun to display all of these cool colors in here. Um, these are actually a combination of antiques or just old pieces and new pieces. I love these so much. These were found in Round Top. Um, these were found at an estate sale, I believe. And the rest are just new. I have mixed some of my fun cabbage ware, which I love to collect, and just some beautiful things. I also have an addiction with um, cocktail napkins. Um, this is my drawer, which I'm slowly organizing, but it has all of my cocktail napkins that I've collected and had uh, monogrammed, and there will be some more soon. Um, but yes, right next to our bar is our laundry room. In my mind, I spent like 99% of my time in here. Um, it is a small space, so to make it a little bit more bearable, we had it wallpapered in this gorgeous Schumacher blue and white chinoiserie wallpaper, and it makes doing laundry a little bit more bearable. The cabinets were actually painted when we moved in. Um, it just so happened that the wallpaper I loved matched it perfectly, so we didn't have to do much in that respect. What I love most about this home is that we have created a home that just works for our family and that just speaks to us and shows our personality and just represents us as a whole. I think a home comes alive when people fill it with things that truly represent themselves and their personality and the things that bring them the most joy. And that's different for everyone. And that's what makes homes so unique and that's what makes it tell a story. So next, let's head into our primary bedroom. But first, here's this little hallway that leads to our primary bedroom that I wanted to dress up because you see it from the rest of our living spaces. So we had another beautiful Gracie panel that I had mounted and framed, and I love it so much because of course we can take it with us wherever we go. Welcome to our primary bedroom. I think it's safe to say that one of my favorite color combinations is blue and white. So I knew I needed that in our primary bedroom. It's just such a soothing and classic and timeless color combination, even though my first choice was a colorful floral that my husband vetoed pretty quickly. Um, but I fell in love with the Schumacher Versailles fabric and knew I needed to use it everywhere in this bedroom. So we had this old headboard painted and reupholstered with some coordinating pillows. And of course, every woman needs a skirted vanity. So I had a skirted vanity made in this same fabric as well. Um, this bench right here is one of my favorite finds. It was found at an estate sale here that I also had reupholstered in another gorgeous Schumacher blue and white print because we are fully embracing the blue and white in this room. Um, and same with this chair. I am a huge fan of finding old pieces and reupholstering them, but this chair is the exception. I found it here at an antique store here in Houston and absolutely fell in love with the bows and the floral bouquets. I mean, if there was a print that spoke to me more than this, I, I don't think there was one. It is just stunning. Um, and this is my little oasis away from the children, away from the husbands. It is my skirted vanity in the matching Versailles fabric that I love so much. It's with my beautiful little bow antique mirror that I found recently at an antique store here in Houston. And same with this Schumacher Versailles pleated lampshade just to top it all off with the blue and white in here. I have many favorite chintzes and they're all very floral. My favorite chintz is Lee Jofa Althea. You'll see it throughout the house in many different rooms. I also love um, Lee Jofa floral bouquet. I was dying to use it in my master bedroom, my primary bedroom, but my husband vetoed that pretty quickly. It's Maria Boada's favorite chintz too. It's very pink, very floral, very girly. Um, I truly love it. I will find a spot for it somewhere in this home, but I love myself some florals. They're just so fun. They're just so great. And you can mix them with anything and that's what makes it so unique and fun. So now let's head upstairs to the rest of the bedrooms. Welcome to our catch-all space, which I have slowly decided to make it into our playroom. Because as much as I love my children bothering me downstairs all the time, I think it's time that they have their own space. So this is a new work in progress um, that we have slowly made into the playroom. Um, just some fun features in here, like these fun Sister Parish pillows with the Schumacher trim and these casual linen drapes. These benches I found at an estate sale and had them reupholstered in another fun 
um, Sister Parish fabric with some Samuel and Sons fringe. And just love the little scallop details and the cute little pendants. But my favorite, favorite thing in here is the treadmill that I asked for three years ago for my birthday. And that's still not plugged in. Makes a really cute addition to this playroom, don't you think? Um, but yes, these built-ins were here when we moved in. So we fully embraced the red, white, and blue theme. I love the theme and I love that color palette for a gender neutral playroom or a gender neutral nursery. And we just, you know, add some fun little finishing touches in here, like the baseballs that we've caught at games and just family pictures and things like that. So it's a work in progress in here, but I'm loving the way it's turning out. And hopefully my kids will migrate up here when they want to play. So I'm very grateful to have a husband that is completely on board with my style. He trusts me completely, um, mostly because he knows that he doesn't have a sense of style. No, I'm just kidding, um, but he does trust me and I love that about him. Um, also, my other model is to do it and then ask for forgiveness later. You know, it's already been done. Um, but no, he truly loves it and, and he's loved the way this, this home has turned out. So I'm, I'm forever grateful for that. So right off the playroom, we have our son's room. And I love this space because when we moved into this home, he was still in a crib and it was a nursery. So we had free creative liberty in what we wanted to do for his big, room, big boy room. And of course he wanted a monster truck room, but we settled on his favorite colors, which was blue and green, which happened to be two of my favorite colors as well. So we just love how it's so cozy and it really truly brings him a lot of joy to be in here, which makes me happy. Um, we did this beautiful sister parish fabric, which is just so fun and playful with pillows and the bench cushion here. And of course, every lampshade needs something fun. So we did these beautiful green and white Vermoy lampshades there. And one of my favorite things about his room is this fun antique table that turns into a game table. I thought that was really cool. Eventually, maybe he'll do some homework in here, who knows? Um, but these were also found at antique stores here in Houston, same with those. So love mixing old and new. And I mean, I wouldn't be smart if I put a super expensive lamp in here. So this is a very inexpensive lamp base with a beautiful lampshade with Brunswick Effies fabric. Um, I just love that so much. And I don't love a themey room, but sailboats have a super special meaning to me. I grew up on the water in my family's home and I just love that for a little boy. I just love that theme. So we have a lot of sailboats in here for him. And of course, we have to pay tribute to his design style, which is lots of stickers on the wall. So gotta love it. So because my husband picked out this home, I gave him a five-year deadline. That was we were gonna stay in this house for five years and then find something that we could both agree upon in a neighborhood we liked because we wanted to explore Houston more. You know, we moved here not knowing anything about Houston. Um, so we're looking now, it's just been incredibly difficult. And I, my husband isn't too keen on the idea of a fixer upper, but the more we look at homes, the more that I think that's the path we need to choose because I have a very particular taste and very particular style. So I just wanna do something that I pick out and represents my style, and that probably is a fixer-upper. Welcome to my daughter's room, and she is four, but acts like 16, so we needed a space that kind of fit her personality, but it was a little bit more sophisticated. Um, one of my favorite pieces in her room that was actually from her nursery was this canopy that we had made in a vintage chintz, of course, um, made from Brunswick Fees, and I love it so much. And when deciding what to do with her big girl bed, we knew we needed to find something that coordinated well with this pattern because I will keep it forever. And we settled on this beautiful Schumacher print and I love it. And of course, some beautiful ruffles because she's a girl and she loves her fancy frills and all of that fun stuff. Um, but to make this room a little bit more funky like she is, we added this stray dog designs chandelier here. Um, and of course, this, just like I do, she has a skirted vanity and this stunning, beautiful vintage bow fabric, which I love so much. Um, we have transformed this little nursery into a place that's still a work in progress, but she loves being in here, loves all of her books and the pink and green, which are her favorite colors. And we love the way it's turned out so far. So for her bookshelves, like most of her bookshelves, we mix a little bit of old and new. 
This was her sweet first birthday hat with her monogram and little bow. And these two are cute little antique pieces. Same with the little silver that was from my childhood. And we just mixed it with a bunch of fun new books that are her favorite with some little ruffled scalloped and beautiful little wicker baskets. Another one of my favorite pieces in this house, because I love cabbage wear and antiques and vintage finds, is this adorable little cabbage wear tea set that I found for her room. And she just has so much fun playing with it. It's really, really sweet. And I just love it. Pink and green, of course. I think who inspires me the most is Mario Boada, who of course is the Prince of Chins, and my mother, who I have learned so much from and who I have tried to emulate my home based on the home that we grew up in. It was very traditional, very much so the style that I have now. She filled our home with antiques and was always at estate sales and antique stores. Um, and just every piece had a story. I, the, the room that I grew up in was a pink and green toile. And then I moved into my sister's room, which was a blue and yellow toile. Um, she, she used a lot of florals and a lot of traditional elements that I love to incorporate in my own home. This is our guest room. And what I love about it is we were able to create this room from scratch because believe it or not, this room was once purple. And so when I wanted to de design the space, I wanted somewhere that our guests could feel comfortable and cozy and just uh, the vibe we wanted was like a French countryside hotel or an English countryside hotel. So. I knew I wanted like a floral chintz, but not something overdone. So I found this Pierre Frey Grues fabric and knew I needed to use it. And it's not colors I would typically gravitate towards. So I, I was expanding out of my blues and greens and pinks, uh, but I love it so much. We have the headboard reupholstered with some matching pillows with some fun fringe and this Schumacher check, which we also had a beautiful skirted table because every room needs a skirted table. Um, designing these bookshelves, which were here, was the ultimate challenge because how do you fill a space this big? But I was able to do it with a lot of estate sale finds, um, old books and some also new blue and white pieces. But my favorite part is that I was actually able to get good use out of my law school books because I was able to use them in my bookshelf styling. So my parents are very proud of me. Um, another one of my favorite pieces in here, which is a new addition, is this beautiful secretary's desk. And I love, love, love the boti dealing on that as well. And funny story about this armoire is that someone in my neighborhood was giving it away for free. And I just cannot believe it because it came, they posted it like two days after I found this gorgeous bow secretary's desk at an estate sale or an antique store. And it has another beautiful bow detailing and I just love it so much. Um, so it truly makes the room feel so cozy and has that vintage vibe that I was looking for so much in this room. The word home is somewhere that you feel safe, that you feel comfortable in and the place that truly represents your own style and your own personality. Hi Homeworthy, I'm Mateo. Welcome to my home here in Houston. Cannot wait to show you around. Come on in. Allison Kenworthy, the founder of Homeworthy, and we're now offering a membership plan that gives our supporters early and exclusive access to new videos. Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Roz. You're here at my home in Los Angeles. Come on in. I can't wait to show you around. With this membership, we invite you to open more doors, discovering new homes, rooms, and personalities available only to those with the keys to our guest house. You'll be part of a community of people who are just as passionate as you are about interior design. Before today's episode, click the join button below to support all of the storytelling we do on this channel. Our growing community of members help to directly fund more videos so we can capture these extraordinary homes from around the world. So join today to receive early and exclusive access to new Homeworthy videos. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Hi, I'm Matthew Harris, the designer of Mateo New York, and you're here in my Houston home.
So, I moved back from Luxembourg in 2019 after a long stint in Europe and I was searching for a home. Covid came and I've always loved Houston so I took a little road trip down to Houston, came and saw a few properties, lost the first property that I put in an offer for due to the seller pulling back not wanting to sell the properties and my realtor said to me, come and look at this last house. The moment I came through the door, I immediately knew it. The, the floor to ceiling, double height, living room just blew my mind away. Sure, it was dated and a bit aged and in old Texan fashion, um, but I knew the bones were just fantastic. So I bought the house and completely gut renovated it. I mean, there were bars everywhere. There was a gas fireplace everywhere. I got rid of all of that and then made it you know, a very modern, relaxing and welcoming home. Welcome to my foyer. Um, as you can see, it's quite quaint. And I decided to really open up the space because when I bought this house, we had these old farmhouse banisters and it just really made the space feels so compact. But as you can tell now with the new modern touches, it really just opens up the space and give it a breath of fresh air. There's a beautiful light sculpture in the ceiling by Michael Anastadides, a Spanish lighting designer. And this piece is called the arrangement. You can choose whichever configuration you'd like. Um, and you can add as many pieces as you'd like. I've always wanted this piece. So the moment I could save my coins to get it, I definitely went for it. And I think it just, is a great conversation piece when you walk in. Um, I also went with a, you know, a, a frameless banister because um, we're grown adults and I don't have kids. I know everyone is always concerned about falling off, but I think it's just a beautiful architectural touch. And we also went with these beautiful wide oak planks for the staircase, which I absolutely adore. And then we added this beautiful quartz inlay for a modern touch. I really just love the entry and I think the entry of a house should be, should just be welcoming and warm. I, I don't know, I just love it. <laughs> I really do. Um, it really makes me happy once I walk in. To the left of the foyer is the dining room and I will now show you. Welcome to my dining room. Um, it's kind of a room filled with pop colors. Very modern, a vintage Leon Rosen table that I got in Atlanta while I was on a trip. And I've always, I've been watching actually this table on first dibs for so long. Went to Atlanta and found it on a deal. I think I paid nothing for it. Changed the tabletop and did a larger glass on top and I'm, I have my beautiful Christoffel egg that we just love to present at dinner because <laughs> everyone is always wondering where is the silverware but it's all here there's an Ethan Cook piece of art here that my dealer sent over it's not even a painting it's actually hand woven canvas to create this piece very modern very minimal my mom forced me to add color in the house so this was the first injection of color the light sculpture is a mobile by Angel Mumbieru, who is also another Spanish designer, and it's called, it's a mobile inspired by Alexander Calder. Um, as you could tell, I love Alexander Calder's work. There's also another mobile sitting here on this pedestal. And this is by Volta in Paris, which is also produced in Spain. For some reason there, it seems as if I have a lot of Spanish creations <laughs> in this house. Um, but no, this is the dining room and it's, so simple and minimal and I love a brutalist chair so everyone makes fun of my chairs because they you know they're really a work of art they're like sculptures and I like a chair that's a bit punishing if, if I must say so they're quite sturdy and hard but I think it's the perfect touch for the dining room and you sit you sit upright in these chairs which I love um, again they're quite punishing but a beautiful touch to a, a very modern and minimal but cozy dining room. You know, for dining, for entertaining, I like to keep it quite simple. Um, I don't like when things are too pretentious, so I don't need a massive ice bucket and the you know the whole display. I like when 
you're comfortable in the space. Oftentimes you go to people's parties, you're nervous to sit somewhere, you're nervous to put a glass down somewhere. This is not the home for that. Here you really truly can just relax and enjoy the party. It's kind of a colonial style home. Um, in this, I live in this gated compound and all the homes are these kind of a colonial Mac mini mansions, I guess. It was, I think that's how people in Texas kind of lived. And I'm anti-colonial homes based on the fact that I'm from a, an English colony called Jamaica. So when you walk into the house, it's this beautiful modern delight. I like to call it a Gemini home because you get one thing one minute and when you come over the other side, it's a complete different thing. So this is what I like to call a Gemini home. Well, I, I like to start with modern art. I'm obsessed with artists like Alexander Kolder, Vasily Kandinsky, the Russian painter. Um, so that always, you know, sparks the inspiration for anything that I do in terms of design, whether it's jewelry or interior design. Um, I love pops of color, although I don't wear color normally. I literally only wear black. I'm trying to even, you know, spur up my collection by putting on a blue denim because I'm literally in all black. When you see my closet, you'll understand. Um, but my design style is truly just modern and comfortable. For me, comfort is so important because you go to some people's house and it's like a gallery. You know, this house is so easy to live in because nothing is too precious. And I think when you live in a home, nothing should be too precious or, you know, or untouchable. I grew up with a mother who wouldn't allow me to sit in one of the living rooms because she was like, no one goes here. You know, this is only for special occasions. At this house, in this home, everything is just to be used and touched and to experience from the art to the, the funky Turgi, Turgi X Storm chairs, you know. It's, it's truly my style. Again, simple, but functional and hopefully timeless. Off the dining room is the living room. I'll take you there. Welcome to my living room. This space really is just impressive. It's this grand volume and just really collectible furniture. I've been collecting furniture for quite some time and I did not have a space to put it. Luckily, I found the perfect home for all this great furniture. So this space was quite a challenge in the sense that because of its size, how, did you, how could one make it intimate and warm at the same time? And I hope that I have accomplished that. We place the Le Corbusier chaise next to this fantastic light sculpture. And I adore this light sculpture by Nicolas Buffard because it looks as if the bulb is melting on the steel. Again, beautifully handmade in LA. Real, I found this at Love House New York and just immediately had to have it. I believe they sold it to me off the floor. Um, there's a Vladimir Kagan couch, which is sitting next to a Charlotte Period pair of stools. Again, just archival, great furniture pieces that will stand the test of time. I've always wanted Nicholas Kagan couches because I used to watch them on first dibs. So I'm always on the app looking and bidding been very fortunate to get two pieces in this house. I paint, uh, most people don't know that. So this piece I painted myself and I thought it was the perfect accent to the home. Um, again, quite a dramatic scale, but it's perfect in this double height with this double height ceiling. There's a French oak bench, which is heavy <laughs> that, Again, another perfect piece in, in, the, in the living room. So you can sit here and have a really great glass of champagne. And I love that all the patina and the scratches are here on the, the bench, because I think it just gives it more character. A very good, very good vintage find. Um, when I bought this house, there wasn't a pool. And as I mentioned earlier, when, you, when I first opened the doors to this house, I knew immediately this, is the this was the house I wanted because I, I could envision the pool in front of this stunning set of windows. Um, and yeah, we, we built a pool. It was a nightmare to build a pool, but we finally, <laughs> finally did it. And uh, it's the perfect accent to this living room. 
Now, the Turkey X Storm chairs from 1980, a very impressive find I found it from a dealer in Amsterdam. And normally they come in these funky colors of like reds and yellows and neon green. And the dealer was able to reupholster it for me here in black. And I know they look insane to sit on, but I tell you, they're so comfortable. Everybody comes over and they're nervous to sit on the furniture. I'm like, guys, really, just sit, because it's so comfy. And as I said, I encourage everybody to come here and like relax and have fun. And we have raves. Every Thanksgiving, we have raves. And you know, you can stand on the table because nothing is too precious here. Everything is livable. And that's the beauty about this living room. It's almost like a gallery, but it's a warm, friendly, fun gallery with really just fun furniture. And this is why I love this living room. So currently I'm working on my villa. I'm building a villa in Jamaica. I guess my home in Jamaica. And we're doing a lot of research on Oscar Niemeyer because the house in Jamaica is also a brutalist, minimalist home that I'm doing, but heavily influenced by the tropical climate. And Oscar Niemeyer is a is God an idol in architecture. And uh, yeah, we're doing loads of research on him. So in the house in Jamaica, we're planning to do a spiral staircase. And every day I come down, I manifest this spiral staircase because I must have this spiral staircase. I must have, you know, this very Oscar Niemeyer-esque home. And I love, I just love Brazilian architecture and furniture. And uh, that's mostly what's sitting on my coffee table. And there's loads of jewelry books on the table as well. This is new, the Jamaica vibes, because I'm Jamaican and I love showing people my home, my culture, my country. So there's also loads of reads about Jamaica, because for me, it is paradise. Um, there's also a, monop a, a Monopoly board here on my desk, because my friends and I, we tend to love to just be kids all over again. And I found this years ago, actually at CB2, and it's all dusty at this point, but I, again, just love to have these kind of a things on my coffee table because it's friendly and it's warm and you can really just interact with your guests when they're here. Again, loads of art books and jewelry books. This is one of my favorite um, jewelry designers from Turkey, um, Sevan Bikachki. And this is the kind of stuff I keep on my coffee table, you know? Um, yeah, this is kind of really it, you know, just stuff that inspires me. And when I sit here, I can always go through magazines and be inspired. I was doing my master's and I was like, why am I even in school? It's not my passion. And I was taking a bus from, I was modeling in New York. Let me start there. So I was modeling in New York, finished a job, heading back to DC and uh, a guy saw me on the bus while I was reading a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. The stranger grabbed the book out of my hand and I was like, what is going on? And handed me a book called Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. He said, read this book, it's going to change your life. It's literally that random. I never saw the guy again. So I read the book for about two months and the book changed my life. I discovered that my burning desire or my burning passion was fine jewelry. And I went to 47th Street in New York and started making jewelry. And I never looked back. You know, I've been very fortunate. Rihanna was the first celebrity to wear a piece of mine. I woke up one morning and it says, Rihanna wears Matteo's zipper necklace. It was on Just Jared, if you remember what Just Jared is. And things just took off. We launched at Macy's, we launched at Nordstrom's and things just, continuously just organically developed because I never set out to have a jewelry brand. The goal was just to make really some jewelry for myself at first and see how it went until a full business developed and formalized. And then American Vogue came along, French Vogue came along, and I was top 10 in the CFDA Vogue Fashion Fund and things just took off. So that kind of sums up my, you know, my rise in, in fashion and in 20, 19, I started researching more and more about interior design and then that pivot over into interior design and you know I just fell in love with being creative in general I think that's really just my passion is just creativity off my living room is the kitchen this is one of well 
I'm probably going to say this quite a bit, one of the most favorite rooms in the house because I love to cook and I cook every single day. So it's important to have a kitchen that is functional as well as beautiful. And I like to think this is the epitome of functionality and beauty. I changed the stone in this kitchen about three times. I think my contractor wanted to kill me after the last time. Um, first, we tried quartz, we tried Kolkata marble, still didn't feel right. My friend from Elle magazine, she was like, Google Panda Marble. Google Panda Marble and I discovered this. Found a stone dealer here in Houston and I begged and pleaded to get the last slabs of stone so we could wrap the island and the backsplash in this stunning marble. And what I love about this marble is that there's hints of gold running through the veins here. And again, being a jewelry designer, I love gold and I love a precious gemstone. So this to me just feels precious, although it's still functional, but it's so beautiful and it's so soft and smooth and well polished and doesn't stain easily, which I love. I found this fantastic light fi um, fixture from Lumen. And what I love is this beautiful gold leaf finish in the inside of this dome. Again, I don't love a hood. I don't love a hood over a stove personally. Um, so this was the compromise. And again, just a beautiful kitchen. Kept the cupboards which were original to the house and did these beautiful brass finishes that we found from Rejuvenation. And again, just a fantastic touch. We added a wine fridge because we like our wine, or there's nothing there during the week because we don't drink during the week. <laughs> so we try to not have any wine or champagne there. Um, but no, this is the kitchen and I absolutely adore this kitchen and I spend a lot of time here. When I'm hosting people, it's always Jamaican food first. So we are doing a coconut curry shrimp, we're doing an oxtail, we're doing a rice and peas, we're doing a fried plantain, we're doing an escovitch fish. I am Jamaican so you're always going to get the best Jamaican delights. I want you to always feel and taste a part of my home. So there's always Jamaican food in this kitchen. So when I bought this house, this kitchen was stuck in the very early 90s. There was a, a counter here with a bar. The, the, the island was so tiny, it was literally from here to there. We just knocked everything out and really opened up the kitchen. I think it's important that when you're entertaining, you, you should always be able to see your guest. Um, and so we knocked everything out expanded it, really opened up the space into the volume of the living room. And it's, again, an entertaining paradise, this kitchen. Because while the guests are sitting here drinking and laughing, you can also partake. So this kitchen is an entertainer's dream. On top of the island is this fantastic ceramic from Mexico. I have a fantastic dealer. I cannot stop using the word fantastic because I do love the people that I work with here in Houston. He goes to Mexico and always bring, finds or bring, brings back some of the best, you know, ceramics that I can find. There's some by the pool and there is also this piece here, which I really, really love. And what I love is that the date is also here. And this is from 1870. I, you know, I think it's all, it just adds some warmth to the kitchen. Plus we add a bit of color with the green because as you can tell, I love black and white. I think every kitchen should have a breakfast nook or a breakfast living room, I like to call this section. Um, again, another beautiful find from a vintage dealer in Chicago. I found a Vladimir Kagan. This is from 19, the 1980s as well. I wanted to inject color in a meaningful way instead of plastering all the walls with a main color. I just felt as if art and furniture was the way to go. So this beautiful red just accents this black, white, and gold kitchen. I was in Botswana a few months ago and I found this chief's chair, which I, again, love. They shipped it to me. I was on a trip with the Beers and I went to the diamond mine and one of the members from the mine took me to their local town and I found this chief's chair. What I love is that there is a heart sitting down in the middle. And it's an interesting piece because it's two piece in one. Let me, let me move it here so you can see. Because if I pull, see that? It all lays flat. I have never seen that before. Had to have it, loved it. So 
This was my poem from Botswana. And I want to thank the Botswana people because this is actually genius. And I love a good chair. Love a good chair that is punishing and brutal, but beautiful. And again, there's also a heart. So I love that. <laughs> there's also some Houston art. You know, it's, I find it quite subversive and funny, but the perfect piece of art for the kitchen. It's by a local artist. Apparently he painted this while he was in prison. Don't know how, where he got oil paint from, <laughs> but I thought it was quite, you know, sensual, sexual, and charming, and the perfect piece of art again for a kitchen. I would love to show you the main bedroom, but before I do, I'd like to show you this gem of a powder room and my office. And welcome to the first floor powder room. This is my little, I like to call it the blue box. I'm, I love Eve's Klein, and I love the East Klein blue, and we finally, we're able to get the perfect color. I think there's about 10 coats of paint on here and many trips to Sherwin-Williams, they finally custom made the right, the right blue for this room. And it's beautifully accented again with another Michael Anastadides for floss like fixture. And again, we love a beauty mirror. My friends, they love Instagram and they love social media. So when they come here, this is their perfect way to do their little videos when they're, in, when they're visiting me. Um, but a fantastic room. We love to bring in jewelry notes into the interior design space. So this room is almost this, it's like a gemstone, you know, this beautiful lapis kind of a room. And we, again, adore this powder room. And, I, and most guests, they never want to go upstairs, which I love because I like the privacy. So this is perfect for them to use. Let's go take a peek in my office. Let's go. Welcome to my office. This is a space I use every single day. So for me, it's important that it's number one, peaceful. Number two, functional. I always speak about functionality because I truly use every space in this house. Vintage French oak desk is really a dining table that we turn into the office desk because I love to just spread out while I'm working, because I'm sketching, I'm packing jewelry, I'm shipping, I'm doing all sorts of things. It's important to have just a really mass space. This photo of my best friend, Eugenia Washington, she's wearing our Baroque Pearl earring, and I shot this myself, actually. So I do some photography as well. And it's important to add all these personal touches to the space. So I'm very proud of this office, because there is a mood as well with this, photo with this photograph. Um, that I find quite beautiful. The two chairs for when my assistants are here, it's these Fade Two Good Rolly, ch Rolly chairs from London. Again, really love, I think there's about three of them here in the house. Um, I know they're a bit low, but they're so comfortable. Like you never, you just, you know, it's just, you just sit in there and it's this cozy moment while you're working. I think you should be comfortable while you work. Why not? So, love these chairs. And again, love the desk, love the chips, love this beat up feel. Cause again, nothing is too precious in this house. Um, and we always have fresh flowers, but this is the office. This is where the magic happens for Mateo New York. Well, everything in the house always ties back to jewelry. And I think you'll see that as we go through. When you come through the foyer, there is a fantastic light installation by Michael Anastadides, the Spanish um, lighting designer. And it looks like a chandelier airing, actually. Um, so when you come through, you will see it. And it's also this airing, this airing, or this light is also in my collection, uh, my jewelry collection. And you, you tend to see a lot of jewelry notes in the house as well. There is a kind of a lapis blue powder room. Um, in my house in Lisbon, there's an emerald green, a deep emerald green office there. Um, in this house, there's also a, the black room, which represents the black onyx, the gemstone. And there's hints of you know, gold all over the house as well, which ties back into yellow gold. And I tend to wear quite a bit of yellow gold. Um, so no, there's a lot of jewelry tied back into the house. For me, it's super important that you know, both marry, marries each other um, because it is my daily life. And I also want to be inspired when I'm at home. And this house, I'm always inspired. Now I'll take you upstairs to see the main bedroom and the guest bedroom. Let's go. Ah. 
on the landing of the second floor, we have two really fantastic pieces of art. Um, art is so important to me. And then having black art is again, super vital to my well-being as a creative. This piece is from an Italian painter who happens to be black actually, he's Ethiopian and Italian. His name is Gem Perrucini, and to me, it looks like a modern day Renaissance painting. Absolutely love. He has grown tremendously over the past few years and I've had this piece since 2020. This piece here is by Titus Kapoor that I got from Gagosian in New York City from the gallery. And it's, a redact it's a re from the Redactive series and it's about Ferguson. Again, very strong and powerful piece of art. I'll take you inside the bedroom. <music> My bedroom is a, is a place of, honestly, peace and serenity. Because um, being an entrepreneur, you're always stressed, you're always overwhelmed. So I like that when I come to the bedroom, it, it, should, it should almost be like a spa. So here we have a cloud bed from Restoration Hardware. And I know everyone's probably tired of the cloud series, but this bed, honestly, you lay down, off in the clouds, really fantastic. And I paired two solid marble side tables and these Atolo lamps in the brass, which I really just love. Again, anything with a bit of gold, anything with a bit of jewelry, I, I just love these little touches in the house. The artwork is a water painting by Pepe Mouzon. He is, he is or was Celine Dion's stylist and he hand painted that for me during the Black Lives Matter movement. And I thought that was so sweet of him. And it's sitting right here in my bedroom. I have a Linea Rose Togo. This I snatched from the other set in Lisbon because in Lisbon I have the full set out in the house there. And I stole one piece to go here. And I sit here and I read and I have coffees in the mor coffee in the morning. And we also have a built-in coffee station here in the bedroom because I hate having to walk downstairs in the morning for coffee. Um, and yeah, this is my bedroom. You know, very simple. We just added the Noguchi lamb that I bought in Tokyo because um, I love to also incorporate things that I get on my travels. But this room is, is simply just beautiful. What I love most about this home is that it's peaceful. You know, I love that you can sit here and there's the calmest silence, if there's such a way of describing it, that runs through this house. It's soothing. This place also just hugs you and that's what I love this house. I'll take you to the master bath and closet. This bathroom, again, is very spa-like. I, em I keep the emphasis on things being spa-like on the second floor because downstairs is so much of a gallery. This is this cozy, warm, sensual space that you just want to, number one, lay in a bathtub and have a glass of champagne. Um, you know, take a really long, hot bath in the steam shower. Um, we really kept everything super simple. Did these beautiful slate floors with this beautiful textured finish that we love with these beautiful chrome finishes. There's a piece of art here by a Philadelphian artist by the name of Shakith, who finished his studies at Yale University. And this was actually my very first piece of art I've ever bought. Fantastic artist and uh, was very grateful to acquire his piece when I was 30. Um, so there's a special emotional connection to this. Um, and I'll take you inside of the closet. I mentioned I only wear black, so don't be alarmed when you come in. There's literally only black in this closet. <laughs> and there's a massive collection of Hermes that I've been collecting for ages. Um, so yeah, it's just black and Hermes and vintage watches. And I literally, my mom forced me to have a few white shirts. She was like, you're not going to a funeral. You must have some color. And for me, there's one color in here. And it's like this Cam de Garçon shirt that I wear to the beach. Beyond that, everything is literally black. And I collect some vintage watches. And yeah, I love black. You know, I think black is, 
Black is sexy, it's powerful, but it's also quiet. It's also bold, but it's also humble. Does that make any sense? Just, this is the beauty of, about, about black. And then you look timeless. You're always chic. I love a good dinner watch. So I have a collection of dinner watches actually. This is a vintage Cartier, I believe it's from 1969. And it, it has a double bezel. Found this in Paris of Rue de Rivoli. And uh, hustled the woman that was selling it. I paid nothing for this Cartier watch. I think I paid like 3,500 euros if I can say that. Very good steal. Um, I have a Norwegian friend and he takes me to another dealer in Paris as well. This is a vintage Vacheron and I love to wear this to dinner. Nothing like a, you know, a clean button down and a chic watch. Again, timeless, sexy and decadent. <laughs> the last room I'll show you on this floor is the guest bedroom. And welcome to the guest bedroom. This room again is very spa-like. I know you'll be tired of this word, this phrase by the time I'm done. But this room, warm and very cozy with little touches of modernism here. This beautiful mirror that I got from Canada. It's all made of concrete and has this beautiful marbleized finish. Another Faygood, another Faygood um, rolly chair. This beautiful vase which was gifted to me from a friend, Melody. And I believe it's from... Um, Adam, see, forgot the name. Anyway, <laughs> I should remember, it was a gift. What is wrong with me? Oh, it's Jonathan Adler. God damn it. Anyway, so yeah, that's how I got this, <laughs> that's how I got this base. A friend gifted that to me as a housewarming gift. Um, I have some family portraits in here. That's my dad with his first Cadillac. He likes to tell me he was the first person with a Cadillac in Jamaica. And this is me at my christening. Um, restoration hardware bed and beautiful Belgian linen and I believe and this beautiful lamp that I got from Lulu and Georgia so that was some online shopping that was done well because I really love these lamps they're very heavy so solid marble and the stingray side tables that I absolutely just love the texture I love anything that's like tactile and has a really rich finish and yeah, this is the guest bedroom. I try not to make it too comfortable because I don't want my guests to stay that long. But they really, really just love this room. And again, this room is like a warm hug. And it's right off the yoga studio. So there's this beautiful combination of fitness on this side of the house and comfort. What makes it come alive? God, I think it's how you live in it that makes it come alive. And I, I think it's so important to truly just love being home. Especially after COVID, home has become such an integral part in so many people's lives. And I think living, truly living in your home is of utmost importance for a house to come alive. To me, home means a peaceful sanctuary. Be sure to visit our website, homeworthy.com, to discover amazing furniture, art, accessories, and more, all handpicked by our editors to help transform your house into a home. All of the items are inspired by the episodes you see here on Homeworthy. Enjoy! Thanks for watching. Go to homeworthy.com for exclusive content and shopping guides.